that app is downloaded. Okay, next. No internet. No internet. Now I search the world, but it couldn't fit.
welcome to Community. We are so glad that you're here with us today. This might be the first time you've ever jumped onto a video like this. And if that is the case, let me, let me just say, we are so excited that you have joined us. You might have just clicked on this video randomly. You might have been invited into somebody's living room or their backyard, and we are so glad that you're here. And we realize that as we go through the course of this worship service, that there might be some things that are confusing. You might hear something that raises some questions, and we want to walk with you. We want to journey with you. And so there's an email on the screen. You can email us any question. No question is too crazy. We would love to be able to have the opportunity to dialogue with you and walk with you through this. And because we are a community, we also want to journey with you through life's victories, but also through your challenges. And so if you have a care need or you want to just talk to somebody, there's a, a phone number here on the screen. And that's for our pastor on call. If you want to call, call in and leave a voicemail, whoever our pastor on call is that day, they will listen to that voicemail and they'll get back to you just as soon as they can. But again, we want to be with you and walk with you. We take our name community very seriously. And also you're going to see throughout the course of this gathering that there's going to be questions for you to reflect on, whether you're watching by yourself and want to just do personal reflection or whether you're meeting with a group of your friends or family. Uh, these are questions for you to, to start, a, start a conversation, to start a dialogue, and we want to encourage that. We also want to know that you are here today, that you joined us. And so you're, there's a link on the screen. I want to invite you just to click on that link. Let us know you were here. Let us know how we can stay connected with you. Again, we take our name seriously, and we want to journey with you through, um, through, your, through life. And finally, if you are part of this family and you feel led to contribute financially to the mission and ministry, well, first of all, we wanted to say thank you. Thank you for this, the financial support that you've given to our church to keep ministry going. Um, there is a, a way that you can give online and you'll see the link there, but there's also a way that you can just mail um, your offering into and there's, you can mail your um, offering into the church office as well. So again, we are ecstatic that you decided to join us today. Let's continue to worship together.
God of mercy and grace, you are our refuge and our strength. You are an ever-present help in trouble, and today we come before you re recognizing we are worn out and tired. We seek to be your ambassadors, to continue to live out your love, and to reach out to those who are vulnerable and marginalized. We are called and convicted to do this, but we recognize that how broken the world is and how great and vast it is to serve. So God, we ask that you renew our souls so that we can continue to press in and break systems of injustice. God, continue to refresh our lives so that in moments of despair and in moments when it feels too overwhelming, you break in and give us the hope that we need. God, we ask that you continue to send your spirit to fill our lives. As you promised in Acts, we pray that we will have that power received through the Holy Spirit, that it daily energizes us for our mission to continue to invest and find ways to act and respond. God, may you help us not grow weary, but to continue to persevere so that the world can see, that the world can hear, and the world can experience the tangible representation of you, Jesus, in our world. God, may we be people of blessings. May we bless those around us. 
May we pray and intercede for those, and may we feel what other people feel. May we hurt when they hurt. May we laugh and rejoice when others celebrate. God, may we feel what you feel each and every day. And as we pray for those, God, may you help us to continue to listen to one another. And today, as we learn about what it looks like to talk about hospitality and eating with one another, may you open those doors and opportunities for us to enter into table fellowship. God, it's easy for us to make excuses or to get too busy. God, we pray today that you will continually to find opportunities so that we can go out and bless. May there not be barriers or roadblocks in our lives, but may we see moments where we can enter in and just linger around the table with those. And God, as you speak in our lives, we also pray that you'll be with those who are sick, for those who are on the front lines, for those who are in leadership roles, for those working on vaccines and a cure, and for those in the states that are seeing an increase in cases again. God, the situation is real and we ask that you heal and intervene. God, may you also be with those that are hurting, those who have lost jobs, that are those that are financially insecure, those who are widowed or divorced or for kids that are just feeling cooped up. God, may you continue to work and heal and bless in all of these situations. We love you, Jesus. We seek to follow your ways each and every day. Amen. So we're right in the middle of this series at church called The Church Deployed. And when I first heard the series title, I was like, man, this is awesome. We're going to be talking about like the church being sent. And it's so poignant for this time. And we are talking about that. But the word deployed, actually, it doesn't just mean sent. It means being positioned, being like perfectly placed in the perfect spot to do the mission that is at hand. And that really changes things because that means that right now, wherever you're at, you have been positioned, you've been perfectly placed to bless others, to bring about the kingdom of God right where you are. And I think about people like who are watching these services and they're in their pajamas, like <laughs> sitting in front of their computer screens or in front of their televisions or they're with small groups of people or with their families or even by themselves or in their suburban neighborhoods, you know, when there's so much going on in the inner city and, and they think, man, how could I be in the perfect place right now to bring about the kingdom of God, to truly bless others? And I think we feel that way because when it comes to blessing others and, and bringing the kingdom of God to earth, we, thin, we, we tend to think too generally. We paint it with too broad a brush. And we don't think specifically. And that's a shame, man, because when, when you read the story of Jesus, the breakthroughs of the kingdom in his ministry, the, the times where he blessed others, that was often for a specific group of people or a specific place or even for a specific person, like the single person that was standing right there in front of him. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I get you anything else? Oh, I think we're good. Okay, awesome. Thanks. So, um, we're, we're taking the word blessed during this series, and we're making it into an acronym. And so Pastor David started with the letter B, and he talked about beginning with prayer. And then Pastor Jess took, took the, the letter L, and she talked about listening. And they gave me the letter E, and it's about eating eating together <laughs> and at first it was like okay why did i get the eating portion of this series like is that their way of telling me that i've gained some quarantine weight <laughs> but but regardless i was happy they did because it brought to mind this story of this mission trip that i took when i was in college to mikinduri kenya it's this small village in kenya and uh we were going there to build a shelter for aids orphans and I was a sophomore and there were four guys that went, including myself, and two of them were gonna be seniors and one of them had just graduated, so they're all older than me. And Jeff, the one that graduated, was like a star baseball player in our school. 
and kind of like a hero of mine. Um, and so I, I did want to go and serve the, the orphans and I wanted to do God's work, but I was kind of hoping a cool side benefit would be that Jeff and I would be like BFFs by the time the trip was over. If we could be besties, that would be cool also. And uh, so one day we got done with the work we were going to do at the work site early for that day. And Joe, our leader, gave us free time for the rest of the day. And so he said, you know, hey, you guys can go and explore the village. Make sure you don't leave the village and be back by nightfall. And so Jeff was a cool guy, but he was a little bit of a wild man, a little bit of a risk taker. And so he led us through the village and then straight out of the village, down this dirt road, just out into the African desert. And the further we walked, the more frightened I became, although I was not going to say anything. And the reason why is if you've ever been to Africa, it's the sounds that scare you. I mean, here in America, when you take a walk in the wilderness, like you recognize the sounds of the animals. When you walk in the African desert, you're hearing sounds. You're like, man, I don't know what that animal is, but I don't want to see it face to face. <laughs> and as we walked further and further out into the desert, those sounds got louder. And I got more scared, <laughs> but again, I wasn't going to say anything because I wasn't going to be the first one to chicken out. And so we kept walking and walking and, until I was sure of two things. One, we did not know the way back. And two, even if we did, we weren't going to make it back by nightfall. And so all of a sudden we happened upon this, this structure out in the desert and we weren't sure what it was. It was surrounded by this gate. And as we got closer, this woman ran out to greet us and she was speaking Swahili. So we couldn't understand what she was saying, but she opened the gate and she motioned us to come inside. And so we would come to find that this was a church and she was taking us around to the back to where the pastor and his family lived in this tiny little mud hut. It's probably just a little bit bigger than most of our vehicles. And the whole family came out to greet us, the pastor, and his wife and their three small children. And they, they asked us to come inside. So just imagine that, the nine of us all together in this tiny little mud hut. They had one room where they lived and they ate and another where they slept. And the pastor could speak a little bit of English and he was asking us to sit at the table and to eat with them. And we knew that this was their custom, but we also knew that this would be a great sacrifice for them. I mean, sharing a meal with us, with four college kids from America, would probably mean that they wouldn't get another meal for their whole family that week, that they would lose a meal for their family that week. And so we tried to persuade them not to do this, but they continued to persist. And so we eventually all crowded around this tiny little table, the nine of us together. And I'll never forget it. Each of us got a cooked egg and a glass of water. And as we sat at that table together, something divine happened. Or I guess I should say, when you sit at the table, something divine happens. You see that interaction between this family and us, like up till that moment, it, it had been defined by differences, cultural differences, language different differences, ethnic differences, economic differences, every difference that you can imagine was present in this interaction. Someone could see that scene, the two of us, the, this group and, and us, and think, man, I can't imagine any common ground that they share, any common space that they might share. And yet when we came to the table together and we sat and we ate and we drank, we were reminded that when it comes to this, to food and drink, we can only receive. We eat and we drink. We take the nourishment into our bodies and we do that together. And when we do that together, we can be reminded that the same thing is true of the greatest gifts of God. His love, his mercy, his grace. These are things that we can only receive. His peace. We are offered them freely, though they cost him a great deal to give us. And when we are able to receive them, they nourish not only our bodies, but our spirits, our souls. 
man, that experience around that table was the catalyst to such a great night. We, uh, the pastor took us around on a tour of his, his small church and, and introduced us to members of his congregation that lived nearby. And then all of them together agreed to walk us back to the village where we came from, which was awesome because we didn't know the way to get back. And it was way after nightfall by the time we finally made it back. And Joe, our leader, was not happy with us at all. But man, we would never forget that experience. It was life changing. You know, we believe in this man named Jesus who lived some 2000 years ago. And he came to earth for a very specific reason. He proclaimed himself to be the son of God, which sounds like a super arrogant thing to say, but he was not arrogant. He embodied humility. He embodied um, love. He embodied mercy. And the specific reason he came was to defeat death, to die on a cross and to rise from the dead so that we might have life and have it abundant. And he had these disciples who were basically the people that followed him around and he taught them. And when he was teaching them about this death, this crucifixion and resurrection they had to endure, he could have chosen any object lesson. I mean, he could have chosen anything in the world, but you know what he chose? He chose this. He chose a table. He chose a meal. He sat with them and he broke bread and he drank wine. And it was there at the table that he explained to them the greatest gift of all time, the greatest relational leap in the history of time. It raises the question for us, is there any more sacred space than this? Is there any more sacred act than eating together? I mentioned earlier that when it came to breakthroughs of the kingdom, when Jesus would bless others in his ministry, it was often a specific group of people or a specific place or sometimes even a single specific person that was right there in front of him. And the story that I was thinking of was a story of this man named Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus was a tax collector, which basically means he was the worst of the worst because not only had he sold out his own Jewish people by collecting taxes for Rome, but he was also taking some for himself over the top. And so everyone knew that tax collectors were the worst. But for some reason, Zacchaeus was intrigued by this rabbi named Jesus, and he wanted to go and see him when he passed by. But there was a big crowd, and Zacchaeus was a small, a short man. And so he had to climb up in this tree in order to catch a glimpse of Jesus. And so as the story goes, as Jesus is passing by, he notices Zacchaeus in this tree and he calls him down. And immediately the crowd is appalled that Jesus would even take the time to speak with this tax collector. But then Jesus takes it a step further. And he says, Zacchaeus, I want to go and eat with you at your house. I want to share this common space with you. I want to break bread and drink wine with you tonight. And this is the moment where usually our focus shifts away from this interaction between Jesus and Zacchaeus to the reaction of the crowd. And this is the reaction we probably would have had. Like, why does Jesus do this? Why does he hang out with people like Zacchaeus? But we have to remember that Jesus' focus is not on the reaction of the crowd. It's on Zacchaeus. It is on the impact that this will have to sit down with Zacchaeus and share this common space, share a meal, break bread, eat together with this one single person. And just like that family that we met in Mikanduri, Kenya, can you imagine two more different parties? I mean, Jesus is a Jewish rabbi, a sinless man who is the son of God. And Zacchaeus is a wretch. He's a tax collector. He's the worst of the worst. And yet when they come together in this common space and share the commonality of eating together and drinking together, we don't know what they talk about, but we know that it is a breakthrough of the kingdom. 
Zacchaeus' life is forever changed. He promises not only to pay back those that he's stolen from, but to give even more, to pay back even more than what he's taken. My question is, what if we all did that? What if we all committed to sitting down over a cup of coffee or a smoothie or a whole meal with someone that is vastly different than ourselves? Can you imagine the breakthroughs of the kingdom that might take place? And I know that I'm asking you to do something that during this this COVID-19 pandemic time, you might not feel comfortable doing right now. This might be something that you have to do later. And so that gives us the time to put into practice what we've learned. The first thing I want you to do is to pray. Start with prayer. And ask Jesus to tell you who that person is. Maybe it's some, somebody of ethnic difference or some, someone of political difference or, or different opinions. But ask him to show you that person. For some of you, that's a blank space right now. And so your prayer needs to be, God, fill in that blank space. And then secondly, as Pastor Jess talked about last week, listen. Listen to God. Hear from him who that person might be and then prepare yourself when you do come face to face with that person over a cup of coffee or a meal or a smoothie. Prepare yourself to listen to them with attention and intention, just as Jess said. Can you imagine if we all took the time to do this after this COVID-19 pandemic passes, then our coffee shops our restaurants, our dining room tables would become beacons, lighthouses, breakouts of the kingdom of God that we can't even measure. How many lives, just like Zacchaeus's, might be changed just by the simple act of eating together?
just you.